Today we're starting a new four-part series called Behind Closed Doors. As you can see on stage, we have some doors that we're sitting behind. And we're going to invite you in to an inner look at marriage and relationships. This is going to be a four-week investment into marriages, those who want to be married one day, relationships, and the family. What do you most want to get out of this four-week journey that we're on? I think God is going to bless us in this journey. And I was praying for um, this series, and um, actually we were doing a podcast the other day, and God showed me something, and I believe that he intends it for this series, for everyone who wants this to happen. He showed me a light switch, and like this, it was just flicked like switched on. And I think what that represented for us is that there in places that it was dark, light is going to come and we'll be able to see like a refreshing. Yeah. And in places where it seemed like it wasn't working, it's just not working. That's because it was powerless. The power wasn't switched oh. on. And I think that God is going to switch on the power through revelation, yeah. through our commitment, through what we understand in this message. And so I just think God's going to really bless families. Yeah. So good. Can you guys hear us okay? I feel like the volume's a little lower than the last services, so if you all could make that adjustment. You know, our goal is pretty simple. I want to help um, marriages that are bad become good, mm -hmm. marriages that are good become great, and marriages that are great become out of this world. And that's what we want to do. And this series, thank you so much. <clears throat> this series is a series that's not just for married people. I know that there are a lot of singles who are here. If you ever, if you're single and if you ever want to be married one day, we want to give you all the what to and what not to do Absolutely. up front. You know, you kind of want to prepare yourself up front. You know, we do a lot of sex talk on our podcast and it's amazing sometimes I look at the comments, not all the time because I don't care, but sometimes I'll go over there. Really, you got to stay out the comments because folk crazy nine days. Um, but I in the comments and every once in a while, oh, that's just too much. You just sharing too much. No, we haven't shared godly principles mm. and a biblical perspective enough. Now, the devil has made sure that we hear at a very young age all the wrong things about sex. And we need to open up our mouth and give people a fun, godly way to have marriage, relationship, intimacy and sex. So we will not be quiet. That's right. <laughs> And you know, where are we, we will share TMI. To? Huh? Where are we going to go to? There are so many voices out there. Like yeah. everyone has something to say. And yeah. you don't know if they're married or not. If they're, you, know, you don't know what their relationship is like. Yeah. And so I just think that, you know, it's nice to, you know, for our community, yeah. for someone to have someone that they trust to be able to go to and know that they are getting information and true, tried and true experience yeah. that's founded in the well, word the of God. Well, the last thing you want to do as a single person, it's almost like there's this mindset, well, no, I can't watch that yet I can't see that yet I'm single and maybe that's the case on some of our content to be honest with you but the majority of our content is still good principles mm -hmm. like you can say okay I heard that it ain't for me yet mm -hmm. I heard that because honestly you guys are on Netflix I mean you're watching movies you see people doing stuff that you're not ready for yet mm -hmm. and so forth mm -hmm. so on so what do you do you say okay you did that but that's not for me yet but I think in every other industry like whether it's athletics, you start when you're three years old. Yep. Gymnasts, they start yep. at two years old. Golfers, four years old. And then by the time they're 20, 25, 30, they've had all this track record. Mm -hmm. It's only in marriage that we don't want to talk anything about it until the year before I get married. Then I want to do some crash course on premarital counseling wow. and try to be a merit expert. And it's like, no, learn what to do way before your bow ass show up. Wow. Or before your equal opportunity other person show up. So we're going to help everybody who's here. So even if you're single and you never want to be married today, you know a lot of married people in your family and that you work with that their relationship is tore up from the floor up. And you're going to be able to take this series and slide yes. it in their DMs, praise God, because you know they need it. Well, listen, the Bible says that the Word of God is alive and active. And so what we will be talking about basically is the Word of God and how it can help our marriage. Yeah. And listen, let's not put limits on God's Word Come and what on. He can do. Anybody in love with the Word, you're in love with the Word. I'm telling you, it's nourishment to our right. soul. And so, I mean, God does the same thing every Sunday. He takes one message and he divides it up, or he will use that one message to minister to each and every single person in here, yeah. all of our different needs. Yeah. And so let's take the limits off what God can do. Come on. All right, guys. So we told you about the podcast. Also, if you have emails, um, e questions for us, please email it 
um, to info at mylifechurch.org. I think they'll bring that email address up. We do on our podcast a, a, a segment called Ask Ken and Tabitha, and we go through every question that you could think of. It's fun. You remember what the last question was on the Q&A that somebody um, asked? Them? I don't. What was it? <laughs> they was asking a question about vibrators, and uh, oh. we, we... Why did you just, have to bring that well, one up? Well, just in Ken and Tabitha's style. I was highly uncomfortable in that one. I don't give a care. I, we answered it. You're just trying to so make I'm me saying, say listen, words that I don't like to say. She has these select words she don't like That's to say. That's right. But you like them when they happen. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a setup. I, I, it was world. so perfect. <laughs> I saw the ball coming and I had to swing. It was crazy. Oh, my goodness. Um, <laughs> um, but oh you check goodness. us out on the podcast. That's okay. too 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 much adult content for Sunday morning. Praise Yikes. God. Well, are you guys ready for this or what today? Sweetheart, would you pray? Oh. Pray us in. Yes. <laughs> Lord, help us all. God help. <laughs> Oh, Father, we love you today. And Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. Uh, give us whatever we need, Lord, um, in this moment and in this time. You know all of our needs. And so we just lean to you right now. We commit to you. We open up our hearts to you and set aside our differences. Lord, we set aside the concerns that we came in here lit with. We cast our yeah, cares to you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen. Name, amen. Today is part number one, and we've entitled this first part, Turning It Around. Yeah. Everybody say, Turning It Around. Turning It Around. And we know a little something about turning around a bad marriage. We do. We've been married for 23 years, and I always say it's been the best 21 years of my mm -hmm. life. You do the math. I say that jokingly, mm -hmm. and I say because I was selfish and mean mm -hmm. and prideful. Sometimes I say that, and sometimes and, I and just blame said, it all on you. And you said, because last Sunday, uh -huh. Easter Sunday, we had like six services in a row, and every time you talked about me. It's one of my best jokes. And you said whatever, it's, you know, like, I think every service you said I, I'll something different. i tell you exactly different. what I say. I say it around the nation. I say, talking about my credit score. Oh, yeah. Talking about, I mean, he's like digging in there, talking about people that I owed. I was like, no, he didn't. But is it not true? Like, I mean, yes, but I just felt like you had the microphone and I was just kind of like, wait till I get the microphone. Turn her mic off now. So I could tell Please, them turn. about his trifling turn, self. Turn no, I'm just playing. <laughs> I won't do that, though. I won't do that, but I wanted, I wanted to. I don't know. I mean, our marriage was tore up. It, it was bad. I had a plan to divorce you. Mm -hmm. um, I told my dad about it and um, he gave me a prophetic two letter word. Mm -hmm. I was like, hey dad, she don't do this and she don't do that and she don't do this and she don't do that. And he was like, so? That's all he said. He never gave me any more counsel after that. He's what never, else do you need to he say? He actually has never talked to me about my marriage after he said that 20 years ago. But every once in a while, you need somebody in your life that when you're complaining about your spouse, well, they don't do this and they don't do that. So mm. you're the one that got on God's altar and said, from richer and poorer till death do you part. So, mm -hmm. and it's amazing how we make a mountain out of a molehill. Mm. And so I was glad that, um, that God used my dad to say that. But I really did. I, had, I was that kind of guy over the first two years that <clears throat> I would um, shut down on her and not talk with her for days. I would um, take my wedding band off and I would go out with my single friends and mm -hmm. we would just party and um, do what we do. I put it in my pocket, then put it back on as I'm coming home. You know, I was embarrassed. I mean, honestly, to be around a bunch of single people. I mean, we got married when I was a senior in college yep. and we had no married people around us. And that's a whole key in itself because mm -hmm. God knows when you get married, you need some other married people that you hang out with. It's not that your single friends are bad. They just single and single people going to do what single people do. You married now. You better transition some of your relationships to the new status that you have. I'm preaching better than anybody saying amen. But um, <laughs> I didn't have that, and so I was kind of embarrassed. And this thing was shiny. It's all dull now, 20-some years later. But it used to be shiny, and I'd go out and be like, oh, my God, everybody is staring at my ring. That's funny. And I'm the only one who has one on. And, but I don't know if we was to give percentages, what percentage do you think the, our marriage was bad? Mm -hmm. um, well, I ask you this first. On a scale of 1 to 10, where do you think our marriage was back then? I give it a 3. A three? Uh -huh. I, I'm thinking a two. I'm, I'm like one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. I at least give us a three. What percentage was it my fault versus your fault? Mm. I like to say 50-50. You know, we both had a part to play. I think you should tell the truth in the church today. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure. 
I mean, 50, 50, why is that? I mean, because we, we, we really did. We, we uh -huh. both had a part to play. Like we just said, I mean, you just. But your part was greater than my part. I don't necessarily Listen, agree with if that. You, if you would have just done what I was telling you to do. <laughs> if you would just act the way I want you to act. I believe two wrongs don't make a right. So even if I did do all that I did, uh -huh. it still doesn't give you the right to go take your ring off and do the things that you did. I'm just saying. So I would say 50 50. I truly, you know, I, like I really believe it was 50 50. Uh -huh. However, I will take re more responsibility. Come on, take it, girl. I'll take more responsibility because now that I'm on the other side of it, uh -huh. I know back then, like, because I decided to fight for our marriage, because I decided to say, you know what? Um, I don't care what he's doing, you know what I mean? I'm going to do certain things. I don't know, I just wanted the marriage. Mm -hmm. And I see the impact of that fight and me releasing my faith. The result is a wonderful marriage. Like I feel like we have a wonderful marriage right now. And so the power that I had mm -hmm. when our marriage was a three and I didn't know it, mm -hmm. like, okay, I'll take, I don't know if that makes sense. Like I'll take responsibility, like I I'll take more of it. What do you think I'll say? What do you think percentage-wise I'll say? I'll say it for you. 80%. Um, 80% 80 you, 80 you, 20% me. You're lying. <laughs> you cannot be serious. But I will give you a compliment that the reason that it got better is 80% you, 20% me. How about that? Okay. Is that all right? Because no, you were it, 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 it wasn't 80 20. It was 50 50. If not, I, I'll take even more responsibility than that. Um, I wasn't a leader. I did not know how to be a husband. I did not know how to define a husband's role. Mm -hmm. I didn't know how to love you as Christ loved the church. I didn't understand that you were my favor from the Lord. I didn't know how to protect you. Um, I didn't know how to be faithful to you. And so I always say that we've been married 23 years. It's been the best 21 years of my life because those two years, I was still flirting with other women. Um, I didn't have like intercourse with another woman, but I was kissing and touching and doing other stuff. Not all of the time. And y'all don't judge me because this was a long time ago. We turned it around. <laughs> Come on. But what I'm saying is that if I really, there was stuff that you didn't even know that if I look back, I would say I, I, I was probably 80%. You mm. know, you were more of a victim of your past, mm -hmm. but that doesn't make it better in the marriage relationship. You know, there's a lot of people who go through sexual abuse like you, physical abuse like you, and come out of a place where um, a parent has passed away or something like that. And so you came into the marriage broken. And I came into the marriage not knowing you were broken and then not willing to walk right. with you through your brokenness. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's what a good marriage is. It's saying that if you're sick, we're sick, but we're going to get better together. Absolutely. We're going to win together. We're going to lose together. And I, I would say I'm 80 percent because mm -hmm. I did not know that at the time, that mm -hmm. it's really the bad marriage was really the byproduct of my lack of leadership. Mm. And that's just the honest truth. But I'll say this. Even though I was a victim, I was still responsible. Yeah. And so, like, we can't allow our victimhood to define the rest of our lives because you'll just remain a victim. You'll lose your marriage. You'll lose everything in that. Man, there are so many people that have the woe, woe is me mentality. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know this. You don't understand this. You don't understand how it was. At some place, you do have to just grow up At one and fight point. the good fight of faith. You really yep. do. You really do. Yep. Or you'll continue in that same process. But anyway, we've changed some things around now. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to give everybody, like, in, when our marriage was really bad, what was like the one or two things that you feel like made it that way? What made it really bad? Uh -huh. um, probably, uh, I would say our immaturity. Okay. Okay. We, we were just spiritually immature. Okay. Um, what made Can you it define that just a little bit? What do you mean by that? Like when you say we were immature, <clears throat> that means we did what? Mm -hmm. I think we, we just didn't know, we didn't know the Bible or, you know, we didn't have biblical, you know, principles like, we didn't have a relationship with God. And if you don't have a relationship with God, I mean. We don't know how to forgive each other. Yeah, we don't. We didn't know how a soft answer would turn away wrath. Yeah. We didn't understand co covenant, commitment, faithfulness. Mm -hmm. well, there, I mean, I can go on and on. Mm -hmm. Basically, let me just talk about me. I was in the flesh. I was in the flesh. If you upset, I'm upset. Yeah. You don't talk to me, I don't talk to you. She would make food and I would eat out on purpose so I didn't have to make it. So I didn't have to eat it. So I would kind of teach her a lesson, you know. I would give her a silent treatment. I wouldn't talk to her for days at a time. Um, 
I mean, I could go on and on uh-huh. with all of these things. But, but the problem for me was that um, I, Satan, and I didn't know it was Satan back then, I felt like I could do better. And I mm. felt like I made a mistake. Mm. I felt like I got married too young. Matter of fact, that's the voices that I was hearing. Yeah. And I believe there's people who are here today, and maybe you'll hear that voice, there's nothing new under the sun. And you got to call a lie for a lie. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. Well, I just feel like I could do better, and I just feel like we made a mistake. I just shouldn't have married him or shouldn't mm. have married her. Mm. And you just got to say, I'm being lied to. And really, if I would have believed that lie and I would have continued on the route that we were on to get a divorce, it would have been the worst decision that I've ever made in my life. It would have been the worst thing for who I am today would be leaving you. Thankfully, by the grace and the mercy of God, he got hold of my heart and hold of my mind. And now I can see the fruit of the fight today. And I think that's, that's, that's encouraging okay. for somebody. It is worth the fight. It's it worth really the fight. is. Yeah. It really is. So um, what else? Immaturity, anything I, else? I think, you know, well, I was, like we said, I, I had a big part to play in it. And I think um, one of, you talk about, like, how you were. A lot of it, honestly, like, when you talk about um, going to Cancun and taking your ring off and all well, of this stuff. Well, I was taking my ring off here in Cancun. Well, no, I took it off there, too, my bad, yeah. All, all of that. When you talk about all of that, honestly, some of it I don't even remember because I was kind of um, just kind of in the clouds. So I was fighting depression yeah. and I was heavily medicated on antidepressants. And so it made me like it didn't allow me to be so sad that I wanted to kill myself, but it also didn't allow me to be so happy. I was kind of robotic and numb. And so I would go to class, come home or go to work and come home and go to sleep. Right. And you were living living life in full color, and I was kind of living in black and white. And so some of what you experienced, I didn't even remember. And so if I were to describe myself in those two terrible years, I would say that I was bound. And the Bible says that if a thief wants to rob a strong man, he must first bind up the strong man, and then he can go into his house and take whatever he wants. And that's what the enemy was doing to me in my marriage. I was bound up and he was just taking my marriage, taking my children, taking my future. And I was bound up in depression. I was bound up in fear. I was bound up in anxiety, stuck in my past. And so it wasn't until I had to come face to face, you know, with being a victim, I had to take responsibility. Mm, Yeah. And when I started doing that, then I was able to start to overcome yeah, that's what and I we love have about a great you. marriage You've now. You've always done your own soul searching and yeah. you really have not allowed yourself to be a victim of your past, but you've renewed your mind. And man, the amount of YouTube clips and podcasts and the books that you've read mm-hmm. is amazing. I've seen yourself kind of take yourself from here to here. And that just, it speaks of the grit that's needed, you know, to move Amen. from where you are to where God well, we wants can't, you to a be. A lot of people <clears throat> are where... I am in my point of life or are where, where I used to be. I didn't, you know, I didn't really have parents, a mom and dad to teach me how to do a lot of stuff. I had to figure out a lot of things on my own. And what I learned, even with depression, even with my marriage, I didn't know what a wife was. I didn't, I I didn't experience that in my life. Uh Was Um, there any happy marriages around you growing up? Do you remember any? No, absolutely not. Not one married, I mean, think back, aunts, uncles, anybody married, like happily married? I had aunts and uncles Uh who were married. I didn't witness their marriage, though. Okay. There was a lot of alcoholism in my family, so... Right. You know, right. there, there you go. Uh-huh. Um, but no, I, don't, I didn't have any examples of that. And so with depression, with my marriage, I had to search out for answers. Yeah. And I think sometimes we kind of wait for people to come along and like rescue us. And, and like, but most of the time, that's not going to happen. Right. We have to fight for ourselves. We right. have to ask God for ourselves. Well, good news is, is now you are, have been depression free for 20 years. Amen. God healed you. Hallelujah. And you can do it again. Thank you, Jesus. Good news. Good news is God has restored our marriage. So now we've been married 23 years. It's actually be 24 years in July, July the 3rd. That's crazy. Yeah, we got married July 3rd, 1999. We parted like it was 1999. (laughs) We have fireworks on July 3rd and July 4th. Come on, somebody. Next year, we're actually celebrating 25 years of marriage, and we're going to have a shindig. We're going to have a party. And you guys are invited. But... It's going to be a ticketed paid event, so don't shout yet. No, we want to do it. We never had a reception, y'all. 
We never had a reception. So I want to do a vow renewal thing. So we got married in the most country ghetto way possible. So um, I grew up in West Virginia. And um, so when God spoke to us about, you know, doing things right, I, I heard the Lord say, you need to get married. And so we got married. And um, at the time, we were broke. I mean, I put the wedding cost about $3,000. I put it all on a credit card. and We didn't have money for a reception. Her mom um, bless her heart, actually made food for the reception, yep. fried us some chicken, and drove it down from Pennsylvania to West Virginia so we would have some food. And so after our wedding, we went to the bottom of the Baptist church down there in the ba basement where they cook it up down there. Y'all know what I mean. And we had some chicken and some cake. And then we said, all right, we'll see y'all later. And we went to the Poconos. And the Poconos, we had, you know, the Poconos. Don't the, tell them with those about those heart-shaped tubs. But this, whole, this place hadn't been renovated since 1973. And it, I mean, this, the whole thing on the wedding, on our oh wedding day, goodness. at the wedding, um, the AC went out in the church, and it was so hot. It was like 90-some degrees, July 3rd. And my, and my <laughs> uncle married us, and he's a bald-headed man. And he basically had the, the he had Bible. He had the Bible open. And he was sweating drops <laughs> of sweat into the Bible. And we sitting there looking at him like, oh, my God, are you okay? <laughs> and um, I thought her breath was stinking the whole time, but what happened was That's really that, bad yeah no we had, were taking pictures and he keeps going tab your breath stinks it was, i'm looking for mints and i'm like time, it was a breath it do. was actually the flowers that they had cut somebody went and had i don't know they got these flowers in the backyard cut these flowers it was so hot that it was stinking the whole time i thought it was her breath but it wasn't i'm saying all that just to say it was the most ghetto southern country wedding that you could ever have went to but what I've learned over the years is that a lot of people know how to do a wedding, but they don't know how to do a marriage. Mm. It's good. They know how to do a wedding. And I've seen people spend $50,000 on a wedding and plan it for years, but only stay married for a couple of years. I would rather have a ratchet, come on, I'd rather come have on. a ratchet wedding <laughs> as long as we stay married. Come on, somebody. We don't know how to do a wedding, but we know how to do marriage. Right. And that's my hope for you guys is that we can teach you some principles so that you can have a great marriage. Now, if you want to have a great wedding, too, you can do that as well. But we want you to definitely have, if I had to pick one, I'm going with the marriage over the wedding. Absolutely. Man, I'd rather you get married at the Justice of the Peace, which you don't have to do that because we'll marry you back here in the closet somewhere um, if we have to. But we would rather you have a great marriage than a great, yes, a great wedding. So anyway, we want to give you today five keys to turning a bad marriage around because I think we know we're professionals at that. Mm. Our marriage sucked. So back then, it was on, on a scale of one to 10, it was a three. Mm -hmm. It was a two, where would you say it is now? Nine. A nine? nine? Come on, somebody give it up for me. I like nine. Thank you, God bless you. Because you did it all by yourself. I sure did. So. No, I agree, it's a nine now. Um, mm -hmm. It's not perfect, or we give ourselves a 10, but we've come a long way. And that's not even like, yo, we got a podcast and we talk about marriage. We're going to give ourselves a nine. It's like, no, we're a nine because we work it's this thing. It's a continual thing. That's like, working. you were getting on my nerves this morning. Like No, you like, were getting no, on my nerves night, this morning. Oh, my goodness. I'm like, we got to go teach marriage. And my marriage right now, you were getting on my last nerve. You're but studying. I, I would think studying. after all of these years of us working together that you would know. She just does everything different than I would do. You know what I'm saying? The way she prepared for he this. He just wants to be the boss of me all no. the time. Well, if and he just, wants I'm me to do you, it life like be he better wants if you me just to do, do what it. I tell you to do. That got to be in the Bible somewhere. Is it not in the Bible? No, I don't no, think I'm sorry. so. But here's the thing. It, so even this morning, I'm like, man, this is, this is tough. But what we know, what I've learned over 20 years is that you're never going to be me and I'm never going to be you. That's right. We are two different people. We, have, we scale different on the Enneagram. We have different personality types. I'm a, a full-grown man, and you're a full-grown woman, and we have different experiences, and the two have become one. Mm -hmm. And so we don't try to act like we have a silver spoon in our mouth and that we never, but what we do is we've learned to work through those things. Absolutely. Like that what happened last night and this morning, just that frustrated feeling and you getting on my nerves, that doesn't turn into a day of not talking to each other in two days of, or some kind of fight. It's like, no, that's you. It's okay. We both yep. have learned to humble ourselves, and we've both learned that we're not going to fight over dumb, small stuff. Do you it's know the majority of, of what married people fight about is the dumbest stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like this little thing that you've made out to be this big thing. Then you start pulling stuff from the past. And I remember 10 <laughs> years ago when you did this. And that's crazy. And we want to help you. So five keys to turning a bad marriage around. If you're ready, say I'm ready. I'm ready. Write this down if you're a note taker. Number one <clears throat> is that you got to locate where you are. You got to locate where you are. 
The law of destination, it starts first with location. If you want to get somewhere, you first have to say, yes. where am I right now? Because if you don't know where you are, you'll never be able to get to where God's calling you to get to. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? I think that's great. I think, um, you know, when I think back to when our marriage was terrible and I said, you know what, I need to, I need to get myself together. I need to make some differences here. And um, I started studying the word of God and I realized this location thing. I started asking myself, well, where am I right now as a wife? You know, and where do I want my marriage to be? Where is my marriage? And then I was just like, well, wait a minute. What is marriage? Well, how would you define marriage? I would define, you know, I would define marriage. The Bible defines it very well. Mm -hmm. um, when I think about marriage, I think about the Bible when, you know, God calls it a holy institution. Yeah. He calls it a holy institution. And this he is says in Malachi that, chapter 2, verse 10 through 18. He calls it a holy institution. A holy institution. Uh -huh. God says that he loves marriage and hates divorce. He hates divorce. The Bible says that when a husband finds a wife, he finds a good thing. Come on, Jesus. That the wife is a crown to his head. Crown me, Come Lord. on. Crown me. You know, in Genesis, the Bible talks about how God created man, that he took the dust of the earth and breathed through it he, and, and, and formed a man out of the dust of the earth, breathed through his nostrils, and he became a living being. And then it says that he took out of the man a rib and created the woman. Yeah. And now this woman who is me, the wife, now becomes, I am bone of his bones and flesh of his flesh. Yeah. And then the Bible goes on to say that for this reason, a man shall leave his mother and father. That means he leaves. Now, it's no longer about what mom has to say and what dad has to say, what my sisters and brothers, my friends or whatever. Now it's just all about me and my wife. But he leaves his mother and father and is joined together with his wife, one. And the two become one flesh, yeah. one flesh. And then the Bible goes on to say that what God has brought together, mm. let, let no man... man break it apart. It and I think that's so beautiful that the Bible kind of tells this love story about marriage. Yeah. And, and I think what my favorite is in Ephesians. Okay. Ephesians, it starts to break it down even more in the world. Yeah, I like Ephesians too because it says, woman submit to the man. It, it's, it does it, say it's that. It's over in Ephesians 5. But you got to read it through the eyes of love and what God was saying because it says, men, husbands and wives submit yourself one to another, first of all. That's true. Second of all, it does say wives, um, what, is it, what does it say? Wives, submit to your husbands, As respect your husbands, mm -hmm. honor your husbands. Mm -hmm. And then it also says husbands, this is the part that I like the, me the most, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. He died for the church. So you mean to tell me you love me, husband, with the love that you would die for me, that you would lay down your life for me? Yes, sir, I will serve you. Yes, I will follow your lead because you love me with that kind of love. So I think there's, the Bible also says this, that everyone should honor marriage. Yeah. That there should be an honor in, on, in the institution of marriage, that it should be lifted up. Right. Because it's so beautiful that God uses the relationship yeah. between a husband and a wife, that the way he loves his wife, that's how I love my church. And I think that's an awesome responsibility for us. Yeah. You know, just to clarify Ephesians 5, and on our podcast, we talked about mutual submission mm -hmm. because to me, that's what it gets into. It says, man, submit, um, woman's, uh, wife, submit to your husbands. Mm -hmm. But if you continue to read or read the pretext and the post-text, it also talks about men submitting to, so it's a mm -hmm. mutual submission. It's not just a one one way right. street. But I think the call to love you as Christ loved the church is actually a higher call than submitting mm. because inside of that call of getting on a cross is also a submission. And so when we really do our parts right, that's when everything Absolutely. kind of flows powerfully. Um, but I'll say this, I feel like we just need to put some respect back on marriage, you know, and I, I ain't say respect. I said, we got to put some respect on I it. I hear you. You really do. Mm -hmm. Because we live in a day and time where people are like, well, I don't know if we need to get married. Let's just live together forever. And I don't, I don't want to get married in the traditional way of getting married, you know. And Satan is trying to redefine the family, the role of a man, the role of a, a woman. There's gender confusion. All of this is basically an attack 
on the institution of marriage, which was God's idea with purpose and yes. for purpose. So if you nullify marriage, it hinders the family. And if you take away the family, you hinder society. Absolutely. And so because Satan is a crazy strategist, he says, okay, if I want to mess up the way that people are and I want there to be fatherlessness, like we, in, on the mission field, we did this one study and we found out there was some crazy high percentage of people that were incarcerated and people that were homeless came from fatherless homes. Mm. I mean, the percentage was like crazy. I mean, it was crazy. Like the majority of them just didn't have a father around. It's the enemy's plan to make women feel like they don't need a man and a man feel like they don't need a woman or even to be confused about which one we are and what we play. But God's original intent is that I'm going to bring, it's not good that man should be alone. It's not good. I'm going to make him a helpmeet. So what God does is he goes and he brings from his side, not underneath his feet, but from his side, he brings him a helpmeet. And her name is Eve and he brings them to, together. And then he gives them a command in Genesis. He said, go be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth he gives them so now our covenant of 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 marriage is not just for um us to enjoy it's also to multiply to um to build the kingdom of god Mm. to raise up godly children and have a godly heritage and satan knows that so he tries to diminish the value and the reverence that we have and so right now in society people are getting into marriage too lightly and they're getting out of marriage too lightly because we need to put some respect on it again Mm. and so that's why god says i hate divorce and i've learned over the years to hate what god hates and love what he loves wow and it's only the creator that can tell you how he created the thing and what it should be what it should do come on and so if god created marriage i can't go to dr phil or to youtube or social media to tell me what I should be doing in my marriage. I got to go back to my maker. I got to go back to the word and say, how am I supposed to be a husband? How am I supposed to be a father? How am I supposed to be in this holy communion called marriage? And all of a sudden you'll put some respect on it and be like, oh my God, this is not just a covenant between man and woman. This is a covenant between man and woman under God, meaning that this covenant involves us three. And I realize that there are people who do not believe in Jesus that are married, and I don't believe you can have the kind of marriage God wants you to have Mm. without God being involved. Mm. I'm telling you, their marriage is here, and it might look real good on Instagram, but if they invite the Holy Ghost into it, it's going to go here because Mm. he's the one that made it in the first place. And so, anyway, so did we go to point number one, locate yourself? Are we there? We did, yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to share on that one? I would also say, you know, when locating yourself, you have to locate like if you're bleeding and you have to stop the bleeding. It's almost like if you have a car accident and somebody's bleeding out, the first thing you got to do is triage, which is basically find the one that you Mm -hmm. feel like you can save the most and then make sure the bleeding is stopped. Mm Because if you don't stop the bleeding, you're not, you can't save their life. There are certain things in marriage that you have to stop right now. If you want to turn a marriage around, there can't be infidelity. Mm. You have to go home, change your phone number, change your address. You got to do whatever you got to do, but there cannot be like a third wheel that you're kind of talking to at 2 a.m. You got a secret passcode, secret emails. You got some DMs you don't want anybody else to see. You're not going to turn around your marriage living like that. Um, you got to make sure that there's no pornography. Pornography yeah. is a door that opens up in the spirit, a realm to the demonic that you have to go and admit like, hey, I got an issue. I need CovenantEyes.com. I need accountability in my life. I'm not going to open up this door yeah. because it will destroy your soul. It will destroy how you look at sex. It will destroy how you look at intimacy. Mm-hmm. And the Holy Ghost, he can redeem it, but he has a whole lot of work to do with years of the wrong thing. You got to yes. make sure there's no addictions. That's just, you got to stop the bleeding. There's certain things. You got to make sure that there's no lying. You know, some people are professional liars and marriages are built on trust. Trust has to be, it's built slowly, but torn down quickly. Mm. And so you ever met somebody and it's like, man, they just lie as a profession. It's just like they lie and they ain't even really got to lie. I got a friend like that. It's like he can just be talking and you can just tell it goes exaggeration. And you're thinking to yourself, that is a lie. (laughs) They can be like, yeah, I was working out at the YMCA and, you know, Warren Buffett came through. Like, you hate you. Warren Buffett was not at the YMCA. Why you got to go add that? And some people, we need to get back because (laughs) Satan is the... someone, you know. Yeah, Satan is the father of lies. Huh? You could have said so. Any other name, a little further down. <laughs> a little further down. Yeah, I was. I was working out. I was in the spin class, and Beyonce was in there. Like, no, she wasn't in your spin class. Stop it. <laughs> like, why you gotta lie? 
But the truth is really what makes us free. Yeah. I yeah. want to be truthful no matter the cost. Absolutely. But you know, another thing that you, you might want to stop is um, the unforgiveness, bitterness, resentment. And I think if way back then, if I wouldn't have forgiven you and like got over the past, yeah. we wouldn't be where we are now. Yeah. Um, because you say, you know, you talk about taking your ring off and doing all these things. I could still be upset today, 23 years later. I could still well, be taught bringing it up every well, every three days in conversation. Because when we just got married, you did this and you went to Cancun and you was trying to see this superstar and you said, I mean, did we, I tell you about the time she broke up with me though? See, <laughs> really? So we were in love. Really? Like, now, I'm, if you want to go way back, I was you just see? thinking. Like I was just thinking. Really? So we were in love. Man, I love this girl, and she decides that she wanted to go into the ROTC. So she decides Here that I want to go, go and get into the army I? and she want to get her wings. So she went off to Fort Knox. I'm playing Knox. the silent violin. She went off to Fort Knox, got into basic training. And when she came home, she wanted to be G.I. G. I. Jane. She mm. felt like she ain't need a man. So she like broke up with me, broke my heart into a million pieces. I should bring that up more often, shouldn't I? I should. I should bring that up more often. No, but I played that but thing for see, like a whole year. But see, like so I for today, for I have the microphone, and so I can I can say my my others my, the, my side of it. So he always talks about how I broke up with him, but I broke up with him when I was not saved. We dated for what like a year before we got you know or. Uh, we, we were dating for maybe nine months. I break up with him. I wasn't saved. But I, while I was broken up with him, I found Jesus. I got saved. I got baptized. I started going to church. And then he came back into my life. And I was like, oh, okay, I do like Ken. But if he would have just witnessed to me in the first place, I wouldn't have had to break up with Ken. Because I was searching, and see, this is what some singles need to hear. I can't believe people are clapping for this. This is what some singles need to hear. I, w I met him. I met him. Well, I didn't meet him in church, but the reason why I gave him the time of day is because I was depressed and I was searching for God. And when I didn't grow up in church, I said, well, let me go to church and I'll find God. I would go to church. And he would come to church and he met me and he said, you know, will you go to church? And I said, oh, yay. So I gave him my number. That's why we got together while I was searching for Jesus. But then Ken came along, filled my heart when Jesus should have filled my heart. But I let Ken fill my heart and he was a distraction from Jesus. So then Jesus led me, I believe. We I done broke up with him and put him to the side until I can find the real true love of my life. Jesus Christ. And when I had Jesus, then he led me back to you. And here we are today. So you should thank me for breaking up with you. <laughs> well, we're out of time for today, everybody. Thank you for coming. All right, we're going to move along. Number two, the second key to turning around your bad marriage will be you got to work on your own personal growth. Oh, goodness. Marriage is the sum of two people coming mm -hmm. together. It's the average sum of us together. Yeah. And that's why you can't be unequally yoked together with somebody. And so if you're coming in here and who you marry comes in here, well, then you're going to be an average here. And so if you grow you and your spouse grows themselves, then you can raise the average of who you are together. Mm. And so working on ourselves is important. Yeah. And sometimes if you... I like what you say. You say that I have to grow me to grow we. Absolutely. I got to grow myself to grow my marriage. If I want a better marriage, I got to better myself. Yeah. Um, and better me, better marriage. Better me, better marriage. Yeah. And if, if most of the time, if you want to fix your marriage, you have to start by fixing yourself. Yeah. For most of us, that's where it is. Because it's so easy in marriage that we want to point the finger at someone else. And you just said it. You said that when you're pointing your finger at someone else, you got three fingers pointing back at you. Right. And that's basically the situation in most, in most marriages. We want to say, but you do this and you do that. And we're waiting for them to do something right when we should be doing something in our, in our own Have selves. Have you guys um, seen that um, show on Netflix called Love is Blind? Have y'all seen that? Y'all got too big of a witness on that. Um, <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I think, how many of y'all seen that show? Okay, we can all get saved at the end. It's, 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 it's fleshy, it's, it's, but it's, it's hard to stop watching it. So, 
I was actually just minding my own business. I came into bed. It was like nine o'clock at night. She watching one episode and I watched one. I got hooked. I watched all of season four in one night, all the way to 4 a.m. And this was before the last one. And then I got to, and then they didn't release the last one until April 14th. I was so upset. I got to the end. I said, how are you going to make me wait? To whenever it's funny because you started ends. watching it with me, then I fell asleep and I'm done watching it. You up still watching it right. and then couldn't right. see the finale. But what I've noticed, you know, so we watch shows like that from a pastoral perspective. And I'm thinking to myself, like, that person ain't marriage material. Mm -mm. That person, I see it in the pods. I saw this one girl, I was like, the way she talking and all that kind of stuff, she ain't ready yep. yet. She need to grow up. Come on, somebody. Y'all know what I'm talking. The amount of, um, the, the amount of, um, uh, deflection and reflection, the amount of I'm um, not being able to communicate. I'm so frustrated and I can't even talk to you right now. Manipulation. Oh, the amount of gaslighting. I'm going to say this to get you to I'm, do I'm that. I'm going to say this. To, I mean, the amount of that, you have to grow up personally mm. before you say I do. Mm. And it's amazing how love is blind, but marriage has a way to rip off the blindfold. Mm -mm. Meaning that before you get married, that person can do no wrong. Mm. And it's amazing that when you get married, they can do no right. And we see it in that show, you know? It's amazing. Like, before we got married, Tabitha looked good, smelled good. She was soft. She cooked real good. I loved her voice. And then after you get married, it's like, your voice get on my nerves. You stink. You look all right. You wear your hair the same way all the time. <laughs> you know, sometimes, don't let the people know. Um, and so they say that love is blind. That's in the infatuation stage, where it's like, oh, I just got these butterfly feelings in my stomach. That goes away, baby. And then you left with real love and real choices. Mm. And we want to give you principles so that you can know what real love is about. Oh, yeah. Real love is that I see the bad side of you, but I love you anyway. Mm -hmm. I see the hidden side of you, the, the side of you that nobody else sees, mm -hmm. the flawed side of you, the idiosyncrasies, but I still choose to love those. That's all in the Tabitha package. Come and I've on. chose to love the good, the bad, the ugly, and everything in between. Now that's real marriage. Amen. But so, see, the, when it comes to personal growth, a lot of times in marriage, while we're pointing the finger, yeah. we don't even recognize that it's us. We don't even, it's like hard to think like that I'm the one you mean, I, but, but what about them? But what did they do? Right. And I have a wonderful story that I want to share about, I was maybe 14 years old and I grew up in the projects, y'all. We didn't have a lot to do. And so I would just get together with my girlfriends and we would walk around and terrorize the projects and just be silly 14 year old girls. And I was really clumsy too. And so with my clumsy self, I walk and fall into a hole, just fell into a ditch. And it was like knee deep. And it, there was like liquids in there that I don't even want to imagine what was in this hole, but it stunk like very badly. Was it dog poop? I, it could have been. I don't know. It was, it was just nasty. Poo. It was just, don't poo. say it. Oh. Go ahead. Don't say it. Poo. Anyway. <laughs> what? I like that word. I don't know something about it. Anyway, I step in the hole. I'm running to um, my house to clean off. But I only got stepped into the hole from the knee down, right? And it was summertime. I had on shorts. So I just you know, put my leg in the tub and washed it up and, you know, put on a pair of shoes and went back out and I'm chilling. Well, I started to smell like this sour smell. I started to get like a whiff of like, ooh, sourness. And I began to think like somebody stinks. Somebody smells, what is going on? And I'm trying to figure out who it is until finally I realized I'm the one. You smell it's one. me. Mm. I'm the stinky one. I'm the one stinking up the place. And I just say that because it's like that in marriage. It's so hard to fathom that you're the one that's stinking up the place. <laughs> you catch a whiff of bitterness, unforgiveness, some bad attitudes, you know, uh, you know, bad, you know, looks on the face, you're crossing your eyes at one another and you think that it's the other person. No, it's you. Yeah. You're the one stinking up the place. So let's point the finger at ourselves and say, God, what can I do yeah. to fix my God? OK, I'm going to put their issues aside. God, tell me about myself. OK, what are my don't, issues? don't participate in this survey. Don't participate. Oh, you want to clap? Go ahead. Clap. <laughs> it's OK. Don't participate in this survey. Here's the deal. How many of you all are in a marriage right now that you've been thinking about leaving? No, don't participate. Don't participate. Somebody messed up and put their hand up. I said, don't participate. <laughs> This is a word for you. The problems that you have in your marriage could just be you. 
Mm. And that's really what we want you to hear out of that because I've been doing this for a while and I talk to people. I'm, I'm specifically thinking of one individual and it's almost like, yeah, I don't know about my marriage. Yeah, I'm in it right now, but you never know. And it's like, they think that it's because of them. And I'm thinking to myself, mm. like when I go home, I'll be like, this chick tripping. Mm. She got a good man, but she can't see his goodness mm. because of what's going on on the inside yeah. of her. And that's what I'm saying. Could you just consider that for a moment what, for, that the issue is you? Could you yeah. just consider that possibly it's you, it's not and your spouse? You gotta connect, like Jesus said it like this in the Bible. He said, you hypocrites. Uh -huh. He said, you point at the speck that's in your brother's eye, but you have a log in your own eye. Yeah. Like first take care of the speck in your own eye, then maybe you could help someone else. Come on. But it's, we gotta look inward to ourselves. So we gotta grow up. Everybody say we gotta grow up. We gotta mm -hmm. grow we gotta up gotta in God's up. word. We gotta grow up emotionally, yeah. mentally. You know, I think those two things are really, we need therapy, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I, some therapists, secular will say, well, you just need to work on yourself right now. If you're married, you gotta work on yourself and your marriage all at the same time. Yeah. You can't just put off your Do marriage both. and say, well, I'm just working on me right now mm -hmm. and I'll be back to you in two or three years when I get myself you together. You lost that option when you said I do. When you say I do, you gotta work on both at the same it, time and yep, you did that. The two become one and that's what yeah. I did when yeah. I was depressed. And But I, I just wanna say this for anyone who is going through like a serious issue, maybe it's a health issue, mental health or physical health or whatever is going on in your life. Don't do it alone. You have a partner. Yeah. You have your spouse. Two are better than one. One yeah. can chase a thousand. Two can put ten thousand in the flight. But I would say, baby, this is what I'm working on right now. He went to therapy with me sometimes. Baby, this is what I'm going through. And then now they are your support partner. And then you can get over it together and have Come victory on. together. You're preaching good, girl. Number three, the third key that we want to give you guys today to turn a bad marriage around would be die to self. Die mm. to self. Good, good, good. And so we've been able to talk to a lot of marriages around the nation. And the problem with many of them is that they are either selfish or married to someone who's selfish. But marriage is for selfless people. It's for selfless it's people. It's about we greater than me. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think? I'm thinking about last night. Last and night? And I'm thinking about how... <laughs> I'm talking about 8.30, 9 o'clock last night, okay? I don't even know why you're bringing this up. 8.30, 9 o'clock last night. Now, if this were like maybe 10 years ago or whatever, I probably wouldn't have passed the test. We wouldn't be here today because we would have been at home fighting. But about 8, 9.30, 8, 8, you know, 9 o'clock last night, I'm... In, we're in our bedroom and I'm working at the desk because something happened and I lost all of my notes that I took all my time and prepared on and I don't know, I think I'm gonna blame it on the kids because I know they had something to do with it. But anyway, I don't have any notes. So I'm sitting up like preparing for today and he's sitting in the bed, nice bed. And he kind of like has his arms spread out like this and he's watching the game and he goes, Tab, you know, I was just thinking, I don't feel like I have as much snacks as what I used to. I just feel like I don't really have a lot of snacks. Like, I don't have my cashews. I don't have my little granola treats that I like. I just need some snacks. Like, and this is not a slight, because he was sitting in his bed like king of the castle, like chilling, all of his needs met. And what I was thinking was, you are so spoiled. Spoiled, rotten, but, I think, but it's a good thing because I like for my husband, I want him to feel like a king. I want him to be the king of the castle, baby. What you need, I got it, I'll take care of it. So like, I, I want him to be like that. Because if he's the king, I'm the queen, you know. Well, that's a word for some women want to tear down their king. Come on. And they just want to tear him down with their words, tear him down with their perspective. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to tear down your husband because when you tear down your husband, you tear, tear down, down yourself, yourself because the two have become one. Come on. So you want to build up each other. So you, you okay if I'm the king? I, I'm okay. I wasn't thinking like nothing about it. I was just, you know, I kind of had myself kind of laid up. You should, and I was just, you should have saw yourself, but I was baby. Some just snacks. spoil rotten. <laughs> Cause she's doing this keto diet right now and she's done aborted all the snacks. Well, let me tell you. Like, I'm okay. not on keto. Why, why don't I have snacks? 
So in the moment now, like I said, if this was years earlier, I, I probably would have had something to say to him and we would have had an argument. But in the moment, for like a split second, I thought this, and it was selfless, or it was it's selfish. Yes, that's what it was. I was thinking, you know what? I woke up at seven o'clock this morning, and to me, that was early, okay? I, I called myself too, sleeping in. I woke up at seven o'clock this morning. Mm -hmm. um, I prayed, you know, got into the word. Mm -hmm. I rode my bike, got my exercise in. Mm -hmm. I went to the grocery store. I came back, fixed the garage door. It was prom for, for our daughter, so I got her all ready for the I prom. I cleaned ready, the though. whole house. I cleaned too. I, I cleaned the whole house. I fixed the bed. I helped you fix that I, bed. I came to the church I looking for to. these notes. I still couldn't find my notes so I came back home and I, I made dinner yes. put dinner on ate, the table fed that. the family then I finally had the opportunity to take a shower I take a shower uh -huh. and then after that mm -hmm. I handle all of my wifely responsibilities no, you wives you know what I'm God. talking about I handled all of that business and so now I finally get to sit down 8 30 9 o'clock at night and he gonna sit in the bed talking about <laughs> baby some snacks I just feel like I don't have any snacks. And so, in other words, he said, woman, where's my snacks? Didn't you go to the grocery store today? <laughs> where's my snacks? And, and like I said, my point, po my point is, okay. if I was selfish, I would have sat there and let, and told and ran down everything. Like I just did but now. But you ran out and got me it. some snacks. <laughs> no, I didn't. No, you did not do that. But I did make, but I didn't make note of it. You, you'll have some snacks. Don't worry about that. And I did notice the empty bag of snacks that was sitting on your bed, that you <laughs> ate all your snacks. And now you're going to tell me that you don't have any more. So anyway, but what I was saying was I've graduated to the point that I was not selfish in that moment. Right. Because, yes, I had all of these things in my day. But I know after 23 years of marriage that you also had your own day. I did. And there were things that you did. It was and hard. there were obstacles that you had to overcome. I did. And so I defended you in my own mind. Come on. Like, no, that he should be sitting there saying that. And I actually laughed at you because I said, you baby, did. you're so cute. Bust out laughing. Yeah, I started laughing because you were so cute. Over I didn't know it was going to get brought snacks. up today, though. My God. You Brothers know, chilling in his house. I did. I sat down and wrote it. I just so, put a little note on the side. Hey, for sake of time, we got to move yes, on. Yes, sir. But here's the deal. Um, we is greater than me. Yes. And so what happens with selfishness is that I want what I want. It's I want to go back to things. school. I want this. I want to buy this car. I mm -hmm. want this. And the other spouse is like, well, I want this and I think this. And I want to watch this on TV. And that's where marriage is bad. A marriage gets good when I say, it's not about me, it's about you. Mm -hmm. And if you want to watch it, you can watch it. If you want this, uh, and then you want to do the same for me. Because in that overlap, that's where the sweet spot of marriage is yeah. found. It's where we die to self. And so it's what we call, and put this in your notes, having a bless me contest. Mm -hmm. So my wiring right now is I like that, that I want to do everything for you. I want to treat you like the queen that you are. I want to serve you. I want to feed you. I want to bless you. I want to make you feel good. I want to make you happy. I'm always thinking about you. And then in turn, I want to be that Proverbs 31 wife. Come on. Where she does her husband good and no evil come all on. the days of his life. Come on, come on. And so I thought she was going to say more, but what I'm saying is. You, you, I you, would, but for the yeah. sake of time. Well, well you, you want to love me and honor me and give me Absolutely. snacks and give me Absolutely. lap dances and you want to give them you wanna, snacks. You, you want to just do all of that for me. And that's in, in the center of selflessness, that's where the sweet spot of marriage. Y'all understand what we're saying? We got to move on. Point number four, stop looking for an easy way out mm -mm -mm. because you can't turn around a marriage if you always looking to exit and you got to stop looking for an easy way out. First marriage I ever did was Pastor Neil and Melanie Geis White in Gainesville. What's up, Geis Whites? Um, and they did something I'd never seen in a marriage. They got the family dictionary in the middle of the ceremony. Mm. They, had all, they had been divorced before and they were saying, we're going to do this right. They brought the family dictionary into the ceremony. Hand in hand, they flipped over to the the word um, divorce and they got scissors and they cut the word out of the family dictionary. Mm -hmm. And you have to come to the place where you quit thinking about divorce, threatening divorce, stop leaving the house Absolutely. for hours at a time, stop saying I'm out of here, I'm gone, I wish I never married you. You gotta stop looking for an easy way out and you gotta learn to, oh my God, you gotta learn to fight for your relationship. Come on, you had to fight for it. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we don't fight for each other. We do a lot more fighting against each other because we're listening to the voice of the enemy. Yeah. But we got to know that the devil is a liar, yeah. that we are flesh of my flesh and bone of my bones. Girl, like we're 
one, I've seen you fight for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Because I'm gonna, I'm not gonna let, I'm not gonna let the enemy steal anything else from me. And I already got him on notice that he owes me sevenfold everything that he took. That's the word of God. Yeah. Um, but yes, I'm not afraid to fight for you because you know if we if we think about our children, if we think about our mother, father, sister, brother, let somebody even talk about, let them think about saying something especially about with your the kids. people that you love. Yeah, you especially with my kids. kids. Don't look at my kids like that. Uh -huh. We will fight. We will fight. But how about fighting for our spouse Come on, like that? Fight for me. Yeah, so like when we were getting it together, I'm telling you, it, it didn't matter what you did. I, I really didn't care. And there can't be any, sh like, no shame in my game. Like, I don't care. You could act like there's no pride with this. Yeah. When you love someone and you're going to fight for them, there's no pride with it. Right. So when I would make you food and you would come home and leave it on the table, okay, I'll just make you some more food tomorrow, fresh food. When you wouldn't talk to me and would, you know, kind of turn around and walk away, I would just smile and keep on being kind and keep on being polite. But I hear a lot of people today, they say, oh, uh-uh, if he treats me like that, I'm going to do it back. And they're waiting for their spouse to take the first move. But that is not how the kingdom operates. That's not what we do. The last shall be first in the kingdom. The servant shall be the greatest in the kingdom. In the kingdom, you reap what you sow. And so as I learned those Bible principles, baby, okay, you won't eat that food today, but I'll make it again tomorrow. I'm not giving up. Yeah. Some people give up too fast. Well, you were doing that as unto the Lord. Absolutely. And to the Lord would reward you. Absolutely. You treated me like I would become, mm -hmm. and then I became how you treated me. That's the word. And so you sowed a seed, and now you get a harvest. That's the word. Are you glad you sowed the seed, Absolutely, girlfriend? Absolutely, baby. And I believe there's a spirit of fighting on every pile woman who's mm -hmm. here. There's an anointing of Come overcoming on. cancer and overcoming depression and overcoming a bad marriage that it's dripping in this house that I want every woman and man to tap into. But it is worth the fight. Come on. And we fight a good fight. It's a good fight because I'm not fighting based upon my flesh. I'm fighting with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And it's a good fight because we already Absolutely. have been declared victorious. So thank you for fighting for me. My pleasure. I'll take it from here. That's, and that's what men need to step up and do. Come on. Like a lot of women were coming to church where the dude was sitting at home watching football and football can't save you, cast the devil out of you, heal you or nothing. Mm -hmm. But thank God for our women that were praying women. Thank God for praying mothers. But now is a season where the men need to step up and say, I'll take it from here. Wow. Come on, man. Say it with me. I'll take it from here. So I'm good. not saying that I don't need you to pray. I'm just saying that now I'm ready to be who God. Come on, means. Brandon. I'm ready to be who God's called me to be. Listen, I speak on and the I'm going to cover our house. Yeah, I'm the high priest. I'm the pastor of the house. Bring it. All you husbands, you're the pastor of your house. Absolutely. And you set the spiritual tone. And, and women like me, like a, a strong women, we want you to step up. Yeah. We want you to lead. We haven't been created to lead like that. Yeah. Although we can if we have to, but it breaks us well, we'll down. It makes us tired. Week. It stresses us out. Yeah. We can't sleep at night because we've never been designed to have that responsibility. God gave it to the man. Mm -hmm. And when you step up and lead and be the spiritual lead, leader of my house, yes, I'm yes ready. and amen. Come on, baby. I got your back. Yeah, we're going to have men, men up. It's time to go. Anyway, we'll give you the last one. We got to get out of here because we could talk this. Y'all get on the podcast. We mm -hmm. talk all the time. Number five is you got to put God first because you Amen. ain't going to turn your, your marriage around in a natural God way. God first. You need supernatural help. The best thing that we ever did is we put Jesus at the center of our relationship. And we did that because we put Jesus at the center of our heart. Mm -hmm. You know, the best marriage advice that I could ever give another person is love God more than you love your spouse. Mm -hmm. There was a time where she loved me more than she loved God, and our marriage sucked. Mm -hmm. But when she began to love God first, God taught her how to love That's me. That's right. And the reason that I honor her is because I honor God. The reason I submit to her is because I submit to God. The reason that I love her is because I love God. And so what she gets is the overflow of my vertical relationship. Mm. If you get this right on the vertical, everything is going to be right on the horizontal. But there are a lot of people who are not going to their maker, the creator of marriage, to get grace and power to function in this relationship. Mm -hmm. And so the foundational scripture of our family from back in the day was Matthew 6, It says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Let that be the mantra of your marriage, mm -hmm. that, we are a God, that we are a family that seeks first, not second, not third, not fourth, but first the kingdom of God. And when I love God that way, he's going to help me love his daughter well. Mm -hmm. He's going to help you, woman of God, love your son, his mm -hmm. son, his creation well. And I really believe that if we can kind of repent 
and say, God, I'm tired of doing it my way. I want to do it your way. Mm -hmm. God's going to step in just like he stepped in with us. And it ain't going to be easy. Mm -hmm. And it might not happen overnight, but it shall happen. I believe that any marriage can be turned around. I'm talking about I don't care if there's been infidelity, adultery, pornography, abuse. I believe any marriage can. Yeah. Not every marriage will be because some people aren't willing to do what they got to do to die to self. Mm -hmm. But every marriage can turn around. It's possible, maybe not probable, but it is possible for that there is nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. And I just see chains being broken in this service. Mm. I do. I see chains of divorce Thanks and generational curses being broken in this house. I see God raising up an army of single people that are keep it locked till they get that rock because they honor their bodies as unto the Lord and they honor the covenant of marriage. I see the spirit of holiness being poured out in this place right now where we don't want to do what's wrong because what's right is so attractive to us. I see mighty men of valor being who God's called them to be, stepping into their rightful positions as high priests of their home, pastors of their home. I see an anointing hitting marriages where there has been division and dissension it being underneath your feet for there is a commanded blessing where there is unity and we declare it over you in Jesus name, Jesus name. and so if you receive that just shout I receive it mm. and I want to pray for you guys today every head bowed every eye closed if you're here today and you want to put your faith in Jesus and you're you want to repent you want to turn away from your sin towards God's holiness from your way to God's way you don't have to be a perfect person but you just have to surrender and say, God, I, I wave the white flag, I give up. And what you're doing is you're saying, God, all of who you are and your power, I need it in my life. And when his power steps in, he's gonna help you with everything in your life, including your marriage. If you've ever sinned in your life, you're in need of a savior. Jesus was all God and all man. He put aside his divinity. He walked as a human being for 33 and a half years, why? because it was only a man that could pay the price of the sin of other men, mankind. Jesus was the Lamb of God who knew no sin, and he paid the price for all of our sin so that we could live forever with him in his holiness. And with every head bowed and every eye closed, if you say, Pastor Ken, I want you to pray for me. I wanna surrender my life to God today. I wanna to be forgiven of my sins. If that's you on the count of three, I'm going to ask you to just lift up a hand and wave at me so that I can know who I'm praying for today. And then you can put it down and I'm going to pray. And so if that's you today and you say, Pastor, I want to be saved today. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want a relationship with Jesus. Please lift your hand in one, two, three. Lift it up high all over the building. Thank you. I see your hand, 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 and your hand. You can put your hands down at this time. Nobody prays alone. Let's pray this prayer together. Say it with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for my sins on a rugged cross a long time ago. And I receive you as Savior and also Lord of my life. Thank you for dying just for me so that I could live forever with you. Lord Jesus, come into my heart today. Forgive me, heal me, save me, and then use me to save others. From this day forward, I'm yours. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Did you guys enjoy today? Do me a favor, um, jump on um, uh, YouTube tomorrow, share this message with somebody else, come back for part number two, and um, we're going to get into five things a man needs to know about a woman, and five things a woman needs to know about a man. It's going all the way up for the next couple of weeks, so make sure you come and bring somebody with you. If you need marriage counseling, there's gonna be some counselors out in the lobby. We have an in-house person, but we also have a list of other counselors in Orlando. If you wanna find a marriage small group, we're gonna have some in the summer coming up in June. Just mark your calendar for that. If you have questions, email us this week at info at mylifechurch.org. Last but not least, growth track step one is happening today. 
10 minutes directly after service, grab your kids, grab a latte, meet us in the growth track room. If you say, this is the church for me, I want to get plugged in here. I want to be a part of what God is doing at a live church. Your first step would be growth track step one on today. All right. Come on, everybody stand. We're going to pray for you guys. Father, we just thank you for every person that is in this place. We declare that marriages are being restored. We declare that you're, give, you're renewing our minds. We declare the spirit of humility is in this house because whenever we get low, you raise us up. So I declare that with humility, also promotion is coming right now. I declare financial miracles this week. I declare miracles in our hearts where we've harbored bitterness and unforgiveness. We'll get it right this week and we'll come back next week and you'll keep building on us as we continue to live um, our lives for you. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in to Alive Online today. I pray that message was a blessing to you. I pray that the Holy Spirit just takes something from it. And he illuminates it to where your life will never be the same again. If that's the case, make sure you let us know how your life was impacted and changed because of the message on today. We would love for you to share this content. You know, we have a saying in a live church that one invite can change a life. We also believe that one share can change a life. I mean, get your share on. God will use your share as a lifeline to reach people around the world. All right, if you like what we're doing here, we would love for you to be a part of our online family. You can do that by hitting subscribe. We want you to be the first to grab hold of all new messages and all new content as they are released. You know, the Bible says that when we give, it'll be given back to us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And one of the greatest ways that you can make a difference and change lives is by giving. And so if you would like to sow to the ministry of Alive Church, hit the button below. And I know that God will bless you and you'll also be a blessing to other people. We love you and we'll see you real soon. God bless you.